Hey guys, this is Flash Flutter from DJ Tech Tools, and today I'm pretty excited to share with you a new mapping I've been working on for a while for Tractor for the MIDI Fighter Spectra. I'm calling it the Effect Squared Mapping, and it does a lot of cool stuff. It's a two deck mapping that does a lot of effect space control, a lot of cue points, and cue point effect space control, and I'm going to go into how that works right now. Uh, before I go into the mapping specifically, if you have any questions or confusions with how to set up the mapping and get it all, um, you're going to want to go to maps.djtechtools.com and then after that you're going to find the mapping, you'll download it, you'll get a, a couple things in it, probably a picture layout of what's going on, the TSI file, and a MFS file. With the MFS file, you're going to want to use that to import into the utility. I'm not going to show you how to do that. It's super simple, and I'll write instructions on the mapping page. And the TSI file you'll need to import into Tractor, which I'm not going to show all the way either, but it's also very simple. So you're going to want to use this import to um, bring in the effects settings and as well the controller mappings. If you have something, if you already have other mappings in there and you're adding it on, you're going to go here, add, and then do the import thing to add it in. After that, you'll have four mappings in here, MFX, MFF, uh, MF Spectra, bank one through four, and it's effects A and B, that sort of stuff. You'll need to make sure the import and output are set correctly to the MIDI Fighter Spectra, and then you'll be ready to go. So, assuming you got that all down, I uh, don't want to waste too much time talking about that. You go straight into the mapping, assuming you've loaded everything, got it all going, you're ready to jam. All right, so what's going on here? You've got your side buttons and you've got your top buttons. And the side buttons are going to control your banks, which are basically going to troll, control what deck and what mode you're doing. And um, then the top buttons are going to control basically effects and some cue points. So here we have these first four buttons are your bank control, this being bank one, two, three, four, and four. And one and three are deck A, two and four are deck B. Each top one is just effects space. The second middle one is key point effects, which I'll go into. So first off, for just for the effects, we're going to start with A. You have four modes of instant gratification style effects. So most of you are probably familiar from the MIDI Fighter Classic Pro uh, 3D, all those different ones of the instant gratification mapping. It's been really popular. Um, and it's going to be four versions of that kind of style effects. And you go into them, they're going to change colors to show you what mode they're in. It's going to, the LED is going to flash a little, or going to um, kind of pulse to show you you're on it. And now I'm going to go a little bit into that. So the first one is exactly the instant gratification. Um, I'll put this on just so you know. Kind of the beat matcher stuff you expect. Gators, LFO, Lo-Fi, that sort of stuff. Your, your Echo, all that jazz. And you have the other ones, uh, similar styles but with different effects. And what I mean by similar styles, I purposely made it so all these four modes all share um, the same buttons controlling the same effects. So in here, we'll go back to the instant gratification everyone's familiar with. These are both effects 1-1, one, one, effects 1-2, one, this is effects 1-3. These are all effects 2, these are effects 3, 1, 2, 3, and this is some freeze up on 4. And they're all going to share that so you can easily remember what's going on. So it's going to be different effects and sounds. So, let's start this over. First one, we already know, is instant gratification. This one's some a lot of reverbs and delays, so you've got some different reverb values, iceberg, big delay, some delay values, and reverb, and modulation. The bend horizon and the ramp delay, which is actually one of my new favorite things. If you hold it, it'll, it'll go up so you can do this sort of kind of cool fade out ramp delay thing. Um, and then over here, we got more kind of slice glitchy based effects. Some slicer sounds, a reverse sound, a granny phase, you have uh, some different slicer setting sounds, you have some other laser slicer, filter, stretch thing, and a different delay rate. On here we got other stuff, mainly LFO sort of style, um, filters and stuff, filters, so you have the flanger, formant filter, different rates of a filter LFO, 
Um, you got see other kind of macro effects. This is Zerp guy, another stretch, a bouncer, and another echo. So those are pretty straightforward. Um, it just takes a little bit getting used to what effects are where, what the modes are. But they're, the whole point is it's intuitive and easy to learn and remember you know, what effects you're controlling in each mode and, and, and to be able to easily repeat that. So uh, B is exactly the same as A on that. Um, the only difference is that these are going to be light up blue for your mode, where these were yellow. And at the flip side, when you hold down a button, it'll be blue on this side, and it'll be yellow, which is a nice little reminder of what deck you're controlling, if it's A or B, in case you forget. Other than kind of you can always hold these to kind of see what, what, um, what bank you're in, um, which is you know 1 and 2 for A. Uh, three and four, which I think I misspoke earlier. So it's one and two for A, and then three and four for B. So uh, we already talked about effects on A and B. Now we're going to go into the cue point effects. Actually, I did miss one thing. So before we, we go out of that, I also, for these last two side buttons, what they do is they're going to do some relative control on any of the effects. So let's say I got this going, pressing my gator. I want to change the value a little bit. You can press it, have it go up or down with this thing, and that should work for any of the effects. And any of the banks. And be a little bit helpful in case you want to kind of do a little bit of modulation on the fly. So that's the last thing of that. Now so I'm going back to the key point effects. So I'm on A here. As you can see, you kind of have top eight, which are modes and things, and the bottom eight, which are your cue points, which are either going to be dimly lit if no cue points there. It's going to be lit if you have a cue point, and it'll be green if you have a loop cue point. So as you can see, I don't really have any here, but I'm going to go to deck B. Um, and where I have eight cue points, they're all lit up. Very popular song, everyone should know, Technologic. Um, just to show you real quick in case you're from some weird planet. You don't know what this is. Buy it, use it, break it, fix it, name it, tune it, can it, fax me. So yeah, that's just kind of fax some, fax some vocal me, sounds. It. Here we have, um, and these are just going to trigger break, them. Cue points is normal. Now, without turning on any of the modes, you have some basic functions here, like a shift. If you want to delete these guys, you have this, which is a flux mode you'll turn on. This is a cue. This is a play pause. And that will be present when you when any of the cue point effects modes are off. But when they're on, they do different things, and I'm going to show you. So this first one, red, is going to be a beat masher, which is going to turn on when you trigger a cue point at different rates. And these are going to designate the rates, and you can kind of see it flashes to show the rate. So with it off, you remember this use was kind it, of a... Use it, break it, use it, break it, use it, break it. Okay, you're familiar with that. So let me turn on, and now it's going to kind of mash as or loop roll, whatever you're familiar with, as I press the cue point. Use it, break it, use it, break it, use it, use it, break it, use it, break it. So I can do it at different rates. Use it, 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 so that's pretty cool and you can kind of get a little uh, remix mashup sort of style thing going on the fly in the second mode you have a slicer and a similar thing where they're going to only trigger when you turn when you're activating the cue points so here it's going to be a you can hear it kind of glitching it up in a slice pattern differently. And that's kind of fun as well, also to do some remixing sort of things on the fly. One good thing to note though is the slicer is pretty sensitive in when you trigger it, so if you don't trigger it on the beat, it might kind of slice it a little bit off, which sometimes can sound cool and sometimes can be a little bit weird, but it is good to know that. So. You know, if it sounds different every time, that's because it depends when you trigger it. Um, so then in this third mode, it's different from the first two, and it's not triggering effects on when you press the cue point. It's just kind of effects toggled on for kind of some uh, delay reverb filter sort of tail sounds to the sky. So this is a reverb. This is a filter LFO, or yeah, a filter 92 LFO, and this is a delay. So when you have them on, it, use it, break, use it, break it, fix it, track, break it, fix it, can 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 it
a ramp delay. Break it, fix it, trash it, change it, melt, upgrade it, charge it. Which is kind of like a fade out, but you can also hold on it. Break it, fix it, trash it, change it, melt, upgrade it, charge it, point it, zoom it, press it, snap it, work it, quick it. To have it kind of go up like that, which is also kind of fun and cool. Um, so that's that, and then the last one we have key or pitch, which is modulating, which is really fun. Um, one I came up with, use, and then use, this break, is where so break, you're pressing break, your normal key points. These will pitch the song up or down. So these two are going to go down, one down, kind of two down, one up, and two up. So use, <laughs> you can press that. Use it, use it, use it, use it, use it, use it, use it. So you can kind of see, and it's going to show, um, indicate where you are in terms of the pitch. These are being lower, you know, for your chopped and screwed sort of action, and up here for your chipmunk action. And you can reset it by pressing both of the middle ones. And so with that, you can kind of do a lot more fun stuff than just play your cue points. You can add some effects and really get um, some interesting things going on. So that's again, as I mentioned, the same for deck B as it is for deck A. The only difference being, you know, that you're going to have yellow up here and blue up there, but otherwise it should be the same. Um, and that's pretty much it for it for this whole mapping. I wanted to keep it the, this idea is simple, but the power in a lot of different modes and a lot of different settings. So you have all your different effects. You have your cue point control, you have cue point effects, and for a long time people asked me for a two deck mapping because four decks are great, but everyone knows most people use two decks predominantly uh, most of the time, even if they're using another one just for other sounds and things. So hopefully you guys enjoy this mapping. I'm going to continue to develop it. It's going to also be for the 3D. Um, and uh, there's a lot of different things to come in the future. There are also, in case you're wondering, there are some combos. I've put arcade combos, which are different for each mode. And these guys, I haven't put them for all of them, but I have a couple for each mode, which is a fun little thing to try out and have fun with. Um, and then, yeah, there'll be some. I have some other ideas, but I just want to get this out, get some people, have some feedback, and play with it, and then we'll go from there. So hopefully. You guys learned a little bit about what's going on in this mapping um, to make it a little easier for you to start playing with it. And, uh, you know, if you have any comments or anything, please feel free to find me on maps on the maps page. Uh, say what's up or just say I like this, don't like this, or I'd like that. And I'm always listening and for future updates. So that's it for this for right now. I might make a more in-depth ma uh, mapping video in the future, but this should be good for now for the initial one. Hopefully you guys enjoy it, and I will see you soon on the internet. This is me, Flash Flutter, from DJ Tech Tools, signing out. See you later.